So I've been talking about all the drawback abilities, and this here video is going to be a drawback ability lightning round. These abilities aren't as severe as slow start and truant, and almost all of them even have benefits. Even though they do have drawbacks, these abilities tend to be very powerful, as they are often balanced around the drawback. Take for example Gorilla Tactics, which locks you into using one move, but boosts the power of your moves by 50%. While being locked into one move is a fairly large drawback, the 50% boost makes this ability very powerful. Often, these abilities aren't even seen as drawback abilities, as the positives outweigh the negatives. Of course, there are some that do make the Pokémon worse. Take for example, Emergency Exit, Golospod's signature move. Emergency Exit causes Golospod to switch out upon going below half health. I think the idea behind this ability was to allow Golospod to spam first impression, though the ability does very little besides that. Because Golospod is very slow, it may often be unable to attack due to an opponent activating Emergency Exit. It's also quite unfortunate that Golospod was released in the same generation as Araquanid, another water bug Pokemon, which has the ability Water Bubble, one of the best abilities in the game. Another such ability is Mycelium Might. Mycelium Might is Toad's Cool and Toad's Cruel signature ability, and it makes status moves ignore abilities, at the cost of having the moves always go last. Now this sounds pretty good, being able to put everything to sleep is a pretty useful trait, except you still can't put grass types and Pokemon with an ability like Insomnia to sleep. Overall, Mycelium Might really doesn't do that much. It does, however, significantly harm Toad's Cruel, as it prevents it from having the fastest spore in the game, going off of Toad's Cruel's base 100 speed. However, Toad's Cruel gets the advantage of good stats and a good move pull, so even though the ability doesn't hinder it, I would say it leads to an overall more balanced game. And I fear for VGC, if this thing didn't get Mycelium Might, it would be Toad's Cruel and Spore everywhere. So, back to abilities that are generally better than they are worse. The next one is an ability that technically does have a drawback, that being the ability Prankster. Prankster is yet another one of the best abilities in the game. It's going to be a theme with most of these abilities. The drawbacks tend to make the abilities themselves very powerful, as Prankster gives a plus one priority to all status moves, at the cost of making those status moves ineffective to dark types. The plus one priority is almost, in all circumstances, worth the cost of not hitting dark types, as in singles, it is easy to switch out, and in doubles, your opponent is unlikely to have two dark type Pokemon on the field. Even then, you can still use moves that target yourself, like Light Screen, a Weather Move, or Assist, flashback to National Dex Anything Goes. Next, there's Contrary. Contrary is a move that can be absolutely broken on a Pokemon, or pretty much useless. Contrary reverses all stat changes made to a Pokemon, so if you are, say, Intimidated, your attack will increase, but if you use Swords Dance, your attack will decrease. Contrary is best used with a Pokemon with Leaf Storm or Draco Meteor, two attacks that harshly lower your special attack, which, if you have Contrary, will instead sharply raise your special attack. Of course, Contrary does come with some drawbacks, that's why I'm covering it. Contrary prevents you from effectively using setup moves, as moves will decrease your stats instead of increase them, unless you happen to be Shuckle and decide to use Contrary Shell Smash. And speaking of smashing shells, Next we've got Anger Shell. Anger Shell is Cloth's signature ability, an ability that was hyped on launch because of a Shell Smash Anger Shell combo, something some people theorized would be quite powerful. Until it turned out Cloth doesn't get Shell Smash. Anger Shell increases Cloth's speed, attack, and special attack after falling below 50% health, though it gets minus one defense and special defense in return. This makes Cloth very weak to priority, even more so that it already had a weakness to both Mock Punch and Bullet Punch. Anger Shell could quite likely be a good ability on a Pokemon that could maybe take hits, deal damage, and maybe outspeed something with that 1.5 times speed. Alas, Cloth has 100 attack, 75 speed, meaning it can't really do much even with Anger Shell activated. Though, if you want to see Anger Shell done right, look no farther than Weak Armor. Weak Armor is an ability that when the Pokemon with it is hit by a physical attack, will raise the Pokemon speed by 2, and decrease its defense by 1. This is most effective on Swords Dance and Calm Minesweepers, who appreciate the extra speed, such as Cellar Edge. Other weak armor users include Armoroge, who can use Calm Mind and Weak Armor to form a special sweep, Poltegeist, who can use Shell Smash to boost its speed and attack, and farther boost its speed with Weak Armor, which will also boost the power of its stored power, Amistar, who can use Weak Armor to help with a Shell Smash sweep, Crustle can also run Weak Armor, though it does prefer to run Sturdy for Shell Smash Sweeping, though Weak Armor is definitely a fine option. Skarmory can use a Swords Dance Weak Armor set, which, while it isn't the greatest, is still a set that can pull a win from time to time. So, why is Weak Armor so much better than Anger Shell? Well, I would say that Weak Armor isn't better, but the Pokemon that get it are. 
All the Pokemon have either better offenses or have Shell Smash, which allow them to be much more dangerous than Cloth, with the exception of Skarmory, who is much more defensive than Cloth. Anger Point is a fantastic ability, Cloth just isn't that good. If you gave Anger Point to, say, Several Edge, it would almost always run Anger Point over weak armor. For Anger Point, the lesser amount of speed gain is almost always worth the increased attack. Though, to reiterate, Anger Point is worse on Cloth due to both his weakness to priority moves and low stats. Similarly to weak armor, Dry Skin is an almost completely outclassed ability. Dry Skin recovers a Pokemon's HP by 25% when hit by a water type move, and lets it heal 1 8th of its maximum HP every turn in the rain. It comes with the drawback, however, of taking even more damage from fire type moves, 1.25 times to be exact, and taking 1 8th of its total maximum HP every turn in the sun. This gives poor little Parasect an absolutely massive fire weakness. So what ability outclasses Dry Skin? Water Absorb, of course, which heals 25% from water moves, with no other drawbacks. While the Pokemon with Water Absorb doesn't get healing in the rain, it tends to be more beneficial to have the healing from Water Absorb with no fire weakness. And when it comes to fire weaknesses, the ability Fluffy balances out a staggering fire weakness with its staggeringly strong effect. Fluffy has the damage of contact moves, at the cost of taking twice as much from fire moves. As far as I'm aware, contact moves are much more common than fire type moves, meaning that this ability tends to help more than it harms you. The main Fluffy users are Beware and Double Wool, as even though Houndstone gets it, it would rather go and one-hit KO everything with Sand Rush Last Respects. Fluffy is a fantastic ability, and the drawback does help to balance it out, as it adds more weaknesses to the normal types that had very few weaknesses. This makes it easier to KO those Pokemon, that may be harder to KO due to the contact move resistance. And speaking of fire moves beating Fluffy, it would be pretty fire if you subscribe to the channel! And speaking of cringe jokes, the next ability is Moody! Moody will raise one stat sharply and lower another every turn. This ability is stupid. It could be worse, it used to be able to raise evasion. But as for now, it only has to rely fully on luck to win. That's not a good thing. Moody can be one of the best or worst abilities in the game, depending on your luck, and it's just plain annoying and competitive. However, it is a pretty fun ability in regular play. Though on the opposite end of the randomness spectrum, we have the ability No Guard, which makes all moves the user uses be 100% accurate, and all moves against it be 100% accurate as well. I love this ability as it allows both players to use moves more reliably. It helps the games be less dependent on luck, which is something I quite enjoy in competitive play. The player with the ability also tends to get the most out of the ability, as they can use it with their own Pokemon's moves that have lower accuracy, but higher base power. Of course, this move does have some stupid stuff with it too, that being one-hit KO moves, though those are banded singles, so I'm gonna pretend they don't exist. And that's exactly what Share Force does, as it pretends the extra effects of attacks don't exist. Share Force nullifies the effects of attacks, and increases the damage by 1.3 times. This also removes the damage of Life Orb, which allows for powerful attacks, with the only drawback being that they have no secondary effect. It's a small drawback, but it gives a quite decent power boost. Not much else to talk about, just a small drawback with a good effect overall. And, uh, sorry, but I actually forgot about this next ability, so the audio is going to be a little bit weird. Uh, this ability is Hustle, which increases attack damage by 1.5 times, at the cost of the accuracy of those attacks being 0.8 times. This is one of those abilities that is great in playthroughs, but not so much in competitive. Luck is fine in competitive, but this much of a drawback for such a large gain ends up with a very, very volatile ability. Fortunately, not too many good Pokemon get it, and it's not a very common ability in most formats. So, finally, there's two more drawback abilities that are almost never beneficial. These abilities aren't the only abilities that the Pokemon that have these abilities have, which just make these abilities feel unnecessary, and tend to be more annoying than flavorful in regular gameplay. These abilities are Klutz and Stall. Klutz ignores the effects of the Pokemon's held item. This has one main use, in that it can be used to trick an Assault Vest. This can be done by Swooba and Golurk through Trick, or Lopunny through Switcheroo. This is overall a gimmick, but can be used to cripple a Stallmon, and gameplay items tend to not be very common, which makes Klutz an even more unfortunate ability, as it rarely tends to come up in gameplay. Stall is Sableye's signature ability, and poor Sableye, did Game Freak like think it would be too overpowered with no weaknesses? With its highest stat maxing out at 75? Maybe it was to show off abilities, but with a speed stat of 50, Sableye isn't speeding much anyway. Stall has so many interesting uses. It could be given to a Mon with Payback, a Mon with Pivot Moves, a Pokemon with only Stall that could serve as a drawback ability on the same scale as Defeatist. But instead it goes on Sableye, a bad Pokemon that at the time had a better ability. Well, it was bad until it got Prankster, one of the best abilities in the game. Like, 
Still has an interesting ability, but Sailor is a very uninteresting Pokemon to have it. Well, I guess I can only hope Stahl gets a Pokemon that can abuse the ability, as Sableye's payback off of 75 attack isn't doing much. Well, I think that's all the abilities I wanted to talk about. There are plenty of abilities that can be hypothetically negative, but these are the main ones that, by nature, come with some drawbacks. If I missed any abilities, leave them in the comments, and if you liked the video, consider liking. If you want more, you should subscribe, and if you didn't like it, dislike it and tell me what I can improve in the comments. Anyways, hope to see you all later.